Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I continue development of the advanced starship. Whether I should call this a starship or not is up for grabs, but it's a 70 meter starship that uses nuclear, a nuclear engine and ion engines and RS-25s instead of Raptors. So, so it's a Hydrolox ship. Uh, eventually it's going to be hydrogen and xenon, the hydrogen for the nuclear engine and xenon for the ion engines. So it's completely different from Starship except that it's shaped like that and it's on top of Super Heavy. So we have to check whether it can be launched by Super Heavy and it's actually lighter than a regular Starship. The problem is with the RS-25s and our sort of limited space for the hydrogen, uh, we end up having less delta V with the Starship. So Super Heavy has to do more work. Now because Starship is lighter, Super Heavy has the Delta V, the question is whether it can get back safely after doing the job, right? We still want to reuse the Super Heavy booster if it's 33 Raptor engines or however many it would be at this point in history, who knows? Uh, they could have advanced Raptors or they could have something completely different, but let's set that aside for now. This is a regular Super Heavy and we want it back. But we also want to make sure that the Starship, the advanced Starship, makes it to orbit. If it's three, it only has the thrust from three RS-25s. Uh, these are vacuum-optimized RS-25s, but they're not that different from the regular ones that are on SLS or the shuttle, etc. Uh, they do have three ignitions, though. So here we go. We are preparing for separation from the Super Heavy here. So there will be staging, but you'll know that it's very high up. We're going fairly fast. And so that's the struggle. So, hot staging, but you're still hot staging. It's probably a good idea for the RS-25s to hot stage, to be honest. Uh, and then the Super Heavy turns around and starts its way back. But we're not following that right now. We're checking whether the Starship can get to orbit. Now, the Starship is sort of sideways. I wanted to see how much Delta V the Super Heavy had. Still a question mark whether it has enough Delta V or not there. Uh, but here, I, I'm aware that the crew cabin is sideways, and this is not optimal. Uh, we'll have to change the launch script somehow in order to make sure that they're not actually smushed against the side wall of the cabin. But it is a, uh, a, a board-capable cabin, by the way. The uh, sort of silvery portion there, that has actual uh, thrusters at the bottom, and it can pop out. So uh, we are a board-capable, though I haven't fitted the parachutes on this one. So here I've deployed the solar panels and the radiators. I have come up with an alternate way to deploy the solar panels so it's better for the artificial gravity spin. But there you see the banks of the ion engines. These are the same lackluster lab parts that I used in the solar system tourism series. Uh, they're specially configured for KSP Interstellar and the reason why I use them is because they're the only ion engines I have that I know work during time warp, or at least in that version of KSP that I used in KSP uh, in the solar system tourism. I'm not 100% sure they work all right here, but I will of course want to try those out. And it's critical that our ion engines work during time warp, otherwise we're gonna be in big trouble. We can't sit through the burns otherwise. So that is something we want. But yeah, they're right on the xenon tanks. And then on either side is the hydrogen tanks. And then in the tail is the oxygen tank. We have some more room uh, for oxygen than we're actually using. So if we could make the hydrogen tanks bigger, we could get some more Delta V out of this. And I'll consider that. I've, uh, I've been thinking about making the hydrogen tanks structurally integral instead of having the girders on the side bearing the load. And in that case, the hydrogen tanks can be bigger. So I might think of doing that. Anyway, unfortunately the game crashed at this point, so I couldn't uh, do more testing with it in orbit. So I decided to go on after the game restarted to test out the return of the Super Heavy. So that's what we're doing here. Launching again and getting to that point where the two separate. Uh, but off it goes. Still using Pekka's scenery for... Uh, the, it's uh, Pekka's models for Boca Chica. Uh, I made the terrain. I need to do some work on that still. But, you know, it looks good, so it's not too bad. And so we got the nice terrain down there for future usage. Of course, uh, this mission could be launching from somewhere else, not necessarily Boca Chica. Actually, mentally, I, I sort of think way in the future, 
And Japan will license the starship and make their own, and this will be the Japanese starship because it's Hydrolox or something. <laughs> and the Japanese seem to do Hydrolox a lot more. Uh, SpaceX sure doesn't, so... Yeah, uh, th there's, there's side reasons for this relating to stories that I'm writing that, uh, that this comes up in. But only as a tangential thing, not a critical thing. Anyway, I will talk more about that. Let's watch Super Heavy try to get back here. So the problem is it's really high up, right? It's beyond 200 kilometers at Apoapsis. And it's doing its best to use the engines. It'll cover a lot of ground because it's high up. That's good. Uh, but it'll be coming in hot, right? Uh, much hotter than it's supposed to. And as it turns out, Pekka did a good job not giving it too much extra tolerance for things. Uh, it is not unreasonably heat tolerant at this point, as we'll soon see. Uh, but it's heat tolerant enough that we're going to get an interesting result or at least something that we can come away with. It is one of those types of experiments, right? We, we got some data, basically is what I'm saying. So here we go, coming in below 100 kilometers. And coming in for landing. Remember, this is a very different situation than it normally comes in at, right? That was carrying a very different starship than normal, only a 900 ton starship instead of the usual 1,300. And actually more than 1,300 with cargo. So it's doing a good job aiming, but then engines explode. I don't know how many. It sounded like three. A lot of overheating happened. And whatever calculation it does right at the end here, it didn't do it very well. So it smacked. I probably should have tried to use the all the gimbling engines, but anyway. So, uh, some some modifications may be necessary, but the point is, it didn't have enough delta V. So, I consider that a win. <laughs> so, basically, we've demonstrated that the advanced starship can get to orbit while reserving enough delta V for Super Heavy to get back. That much we've got. Uh, it's the finer details of actually getting it back safely that we need to tweak. Uh, maybe the trajectory for the launch might be tweaked, or we could have it do a slight retro burn before the engines heat up and explode to slow it down so that uh, that will protect it. We seem to have a little bit of Delta V to work with for that. So those are the possibilities. But anyway, that is the situation with the advanced Starship testing. And for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.